because Dave is a really great human being, it shows itself at every level of his academic and humanitarian achievements. Uh, I mean, here we've got you know, literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of people being immediately affected. This has become a project that's as all-consuming for David as his science is. Uh, as a backstory, that's a pretty good backstory. I was raised on a ranch uh, about 60 miles north of Medicine Hat. I was about 10 or 12. Uh, the elevator operator, Fred Ziegler, came out and asked my dad if he could take me to go uh, look for dinosaurs, and I was pretty curious about that. Uh, I found dinosaur bones. I was fascinated by it. I had no reason to expect that I would do a career in paleontology. When I went to uh, the University of Alberta, uh, I was lucky enough to get a, a summer job with uh, Dr. Richard Fox. He found the first, uh, the first multidubercule skeleton in the age of mammals from North America. Ultimately, uh, he and a, a collaborator from Harvard University <coughs> published a paper in Science the, and this was while he was still a student. I feel that I got an extremely uh, well-rounded education at the University of Alberta that, that uh, again, has been the rock that I've built on. I uh, was extremely fortunate uh, to uh, get one of the very few jobs in paleontology uh, directly out of uh, uh, my graduate work at Michigan, and I came directly here to Stony Brook in 1982. But it wasn't until 1992 uh, where I kind of pursued a dream to go to Madagascar. There are uh, a whole handful of really groovy little animals that you would have never anticipated uh, would have ever existed. You mentioned the giant frog. That's just one. We found what we thought was a crocodile skeleton, and uh, we took it out of the rock, we jacketed it up, so we didn't actually open up that plaster jacket in the lab until 2002. This is the skull over here, but you, the, the main part of the skeleton is here. It was very clearly not of a crocodile, it was of a mammal. I literally didn't sleep for, for two days, and I've not yet published on it. It's a tremendously exciting animal for us because uh, it'll shed tremendous insight, insight into early evolution and it's gonna mess things up. It's just that bizarre of an animal. I would say that just about everything that Dave has touched research-wise has turned to gold. We'd be out working in the middle of what we thought was nowhere, but there'd be children coming to see us and watch us uh, working all the time. And they'd follow us everywhere, and they're just delightful kids, but very, very poor, obviously malnourished. It occurred to Dave one day, why aren't these kids in school? The obvious answer was, there are no schools. There's no health care, there's no teachers. So one day I held a meeting with some of the uh, village elders and wanted to find out what was highest on their priority list, and they said, education. So we asked, how do we help your kids get an education? They said, well, you can hire a teacher. Hire a teacher, how much is that? 500 bucks a year. We collected 500 bucks on the spot. We built our first school in 1999, and uh, since then we've built four schools. And to assist in health care, for instance, this year we brought uh, three dentists and eight students to Madagascar. It's simply astonishing that all this goes along at the same time with the scientific program. David uh, certainly represents the most gracious of Canadian attitudes, and he's a very personable fellow, so that uh, everybody likes him who meets him. And that, uh, when you consider his professional and humanitarian accomplishments makes perfect sense because you don't really get good at assembling teams of scientists if you've got an ego the size of next week. This is an award for very real accomplishments in the, both in the scientific area and in the humanitarian area and the combination uh, is simply remarkable. <laughs>